AI chatbots have unleashed a titanic battle between Microsoft and Google. And Alphabet has lost $100 billion in market share. The Z partnership also fell short of expectations. Google's new, highly touted AI chatbot, Bard, has already made a boo-boo. Artificial intelligence is all the world is talking about right now. And big tech fighting each other to win the hearts of consumers and businesses to stay relevant in today's every evolving world of technology. With every big new innovation wave, you generally have startups that win or big incumbent companies that grab most of the value. In the first internet wave, it was startups that rose to the top and won the market while the big companies were left behind. This period created companies like Google, Facebook, Netflix, PayPal, and Amazon. During the mobile revolution, we had the big incumbents, Apple and Google, that dominated the industry with iPhones and Androids, and each of their own respected devices and operating systems. With the rise of AI, it looks like it's leaning towards a few big tech companies benefiting the most. We have Microsoft, with the help of OpenAI, duking it out with Google. Meta is improving its social graph and business, with multiple AI-powered products, including AI Sandbox for advertisers. And even Snap has a generative AI chatbot inside Snapchat. The one I wanna focus on in this video is Google, which has been seen as losing the AI race to Microsoft, OpenAI, and even open source code. I'm here to explain why the Mountain View, California-based company is gearing up to be a dominating force in AI. So prepare for a deep dive into Google's world of artificial intelligence, the who, the what, the why, and the how. It's obvious that Google isn't just a search engine anymore. From self-driving cars and translating languages in real time to workplace productivity and helping you navigate the world, Google has seamlessly embedded itself into our everyday lives. This brings me to my first reason, which is as simple as it is massive. Data, data, and that's right, more data. Every time you search for the latest Apple product review videos on YouTube, check the traffic to head to that swanky new restaurant in maps, or even just navigate to a cool website. You're feeding into Google's models and training data. And this, at scale, is something very, very few other tech companies can do. Data is the fuel that powers AI. You need both a ton of data and high quality data for AI to work its magic. The more you have, the smarter it becomes. And Google has it all, which enables it to train smarter and more sophisticated AI models at a fast rate. It's been collecting data since its humble beginnings in 1998 and has become your trusted, but not so trusted, smart friend who knows a bit too much about everything and everyone. So Google's not just data hungry and fed, it's also pretty rich and brainy. By that, I mean it has a ton of resources at its disposal, from hoarding hundreds of billions of dollars in the bank to having an army of some of the world's best AI talent. We launched BARD as a limited access experiment on a lightweight large language model to get feedback. This is key in building artificially intelligent systems because it's very expensive for a number of reasons. First, AI systems require large amounts of data to learn and make accurate predictions, which Google has as we talked about earlier in this video. You not only have to gather and store this data, but it also has to be cleaned and labeled accurately, which can require substantial human labor. The field of AI is continually evolving at a fast rate, which requires investment in research and development to stay at the forefront. Experimentation is a huge part of the process, and it often involves trial and error, which means more time and more resources. Third is you need significant computational power to train AI models, especially sophisticated ones like deep learning models. The use of GPUs and cloud-based machine learning platforms doesn't come cheap. Fourth is once an AI system is built, it needs to be integrated with existing systems and maintained and updated over time, which requires substantial software development efforts. We are ready to announce our latest Palm model in production, Palm 2. For example, Google's weaving its big AI model, 
Palm 2 into many of its widely popular products. Lastly, the privacy and security of data are critical. This warrants investment in robust security infrastructure to comply with what's ethical for the user and various laws and regulations around the globe. The actual field of AI is highly specialized. This means all of this requires a top-notch team of not just skilled data scientists and AI engineers, but also product managers, designers, and legal experts. These are in high demand, commanding very high salaries. A company like Google can afford it. While there are people leaving the company to start their own ventures, it's still aggressively recruiting top talent and investing in AI research. After all, it needed to move at lightning speed after Microsoft's big AI push. Your typical startup wouldn't be able to sustain this type of commitment for a long period of time. We're seeing new AI companies pop up every day, but to be honest, we're in a gold rush and 99% of these startups will not last very long. Now, you may be wondering, if it's so costly, then why invest in AI in the first place? Because the benefits and efficiencies that these systems bring long-term outweigh the short-term costs. Over time, the technology will continue to improve itself, improve the applications that run them, and farther reduce costs. Google is embedding the capabilities of its next generation large language model, Palm 2, into so many of its existing and widely popular products. We are announcing over 25 products Products and features powered by Palm 2 today. The CEO, Sundar Pichai, said there are 25 products and features currently powered by Palm 2 and growing. Now, which other tech companies have this broad array of widely popular services that can bring AI to the masses? Not many, and definitely no startup. This brings me to the last reason why Google will be an AI powerhouse. It's because of its ecosystem of products and services. When we think of app ecosystems, we often think about Apple and its products. We don't really think about Google's ecosystem. I think this just shows how seamlessly integrated its products are into our lives. All this is not only products and services for you, but data for Google to make money off ads, and more importantly, data to build its large language model, which ultimately powers and improves the same products and services for you in the background through AI. So in photos, you'll be able to edit and add new elements to your photos, taking into account what's actually going on in the image. In search, you'll get actual rich answers to your questions and not just a list of websites. In slides, you'll be able to easily generate images from text prompts. And let's not forget, AI has stitched together billions of pandemic images so people can explore the world from their device. About the really cool immersive view in Google Maps, which helps you explore the world in better ways. Google is becoming even more integrated into our lives with the power of AI. And to be honest, if they can make my days easier, which they already have, so I guess even easier, then I'm okay with it. Putting it all together, Google is transitioning from a mobile first company to an AI first company, as stated by its CEO, Sundar. To wrap this up, we talked about Google's massive breadth and depth of data, its large sums of capital, brains, and resources to build its AI technologies, and its vast array of consumer and business products and services. In a nutshell, Google isn't just preparing for the future. It's leading the charge, setting the pace for this grand evolution. It's bringing AI to the consumer masses, revolutionizing the way we think about AI, how we interact with it, and even how we live with it. In the beginning, we talked about big tech battling it out to win the AI race, or or at least from the perception of the media. I actually don't think this is the right way to think about it. They're treating AI as if it's an industry. What it really is, it's a tool to help industries thrive for the next generation. So at the heart of it, Google is still about getting information. With the power of AI, it'll make it easier and even more accessible to you. Microsoft is still about work, Amazon is still for shopping, and Meta is still for social and content. Each of these companies can still live and thrive with each other. So it's not a winner takes on market as many people think. Google will continue to be a leader, but not the leader. That's the end of the video. I'm Lauren from Darkman Digest, where I talk about the most exciting insights in the tech industry. So if you enjoy this content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.